This is the True North Watch Company Vintage Rally Timer with the Legend White Dial. Let's talk about it. This watch features a case diameter of 37.6 millimeters, which is at the bezel. Case is roughly 36 millimeters. The length or lug to lug is 44 millimeters. Thickness at 12.5 millimeters with the domed acrylic crystal. Otherwise, it's just about a little over 11 millimeters, not including the crystal. And we have a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some additional specs here, we have, as I mentioned, a domed mineral crystal, which has a sapphire coating. It has 50 meters of water resistance, it has loomed hands and uh, loom plots by the indices, but as seen in this picture, it's basically non-existent. Uh, there's a signed crown and clasp. The case flanks, case back, pushers, and bezel um, are all polished, and the bezel has this sort of Bakelite look reminiscent of vintage chronographs from this era that this is homaging. Has drilled lugs and the bracelet tapers from 20 millimeters down to 16 millimeters. This watch features the Seiko caliber VK63, which is uh, a mecha quartz movement. Basically a chronograph movement that uses quartz technology for the main functions of the watch and then a mechanical module for operating the chronograph. Has a really nice feel. Uh, I can't say it's quite as good as a mechanical chronograph. Feels pretty good to use considering the price of this piece. These movements are accurate to less than plus or minus 20 seconds per month. So you're not really gonna have to worry about this one when it comes to accuracy. Let's talk about the brand. True North Watch Company specializes in vintage inspired watches with an attention to detail that is not found on most micro brands that are doing vintage homages, uh, particularly for this price. I had not heard of them before, despite being into this hobby for a pretty long time now, and they're seldom covered in publications or, or on YouTube. I first saw their offerings on eBay with some of the other vintage rally timers, but they never really caught my eye till I saw this one. I jumped on it right away because it got all the things right in an homage like this, things that really matter to me. So how does this watch wear? Exceptionally well. It's slim, sleek, and dressy, but has a bit of a sporty edge being made out of stainless steel and on this oyster style bracelet. I have about seven inch wrists and I'm a relatively large guy, but this piece does not feel small or dainty. Just feels dressy and classically sized. A true joy to wear with any outfit, whether it's jeans and a t-shirt or a suit, it just works. I've worn this basically nonstop since I got it, wearing it over other pieces in my collection. Now let's address what this watch is indeed homaging. To be specific, it is a Rolex Daytona reference 6241 with the exotic dial or more commonly known as the Paul Newman dial. Now there are plenty of other homages on the market, so why pick the True North Watch Company Vintage Rally Timer? Well, what all these have in common is that all of them reference a oyster case Rolex Daytona. Not one of these does the pump pusher case, which is what the True North Watch Company Vintage Rally Timer homages here. I think the pump pusher case Paul Newman is one of the most beautiful vintage watches ever made. You've got the tri-color dial, at least in this variant, with the white, black subdials, black outer track with the red markers, and then red Daytona script. It's, it's really special, and it's not present on the Oyster case. On the Oyster case, the white dial variant was bicolor. It was the panda. It's a proper panda. There's no red to be seen. Whereas the pump pusher case had the red on the outer minute track and on the Daytona script. So what I like about this piece is the overall size, proportions, and attention to detail. This watch takes creative liberties where it makes sense to, while still capturing the vibe and overall aesthetic of a vintage Daytona with a Paul Newman dial. The burnt orange color on the minute track and different font for the sub dials are a nice change while keeping the beauty of those original Singer dials intact proportionately. When looking at this watch under the macro, I didn't expect too much considering this watch is $265 MSRP, but I was pleasantly surprised with the overall quality of the printing and finishing of this piece, considering what you get. 
One thing I did notice with mine, which isn't really a deal breaker, but there's like a little fiber or something that may have come off in potentially the manufacturing process that came off something that was cut. Not really sure what it is, but it's really not a deal breaker. It's a little loose in there, but you can see it here. Once again, not a big deal for the price that you pay for this watch. Now, what I don't like and maybe some suggestions. I think the bracelet's okay. Uh, I wish it had the skinnier center links or even the faux rivets like what would have been on a pump pusher case Paul Newman in the 60s. I know faux rivets are rather frowned upon in this hobby, but I like them for certain pieces and it would work well on this one. Also, having some text in that burnt orange color above the six o'clock subdial would really help bring this piece together. Finally, while the font on the subdials is fine to me, I would like to see those lines within the subdial coming out from the hands on the subdial. Here's a render of what I would like to see if a version two was ever made. Just my two cents. In conclusion, this is a lovely piece to wear. It has incredible proportions, comfort, accuracy, and the looks to catch even the snobbiest of watch snobs into considering one. It gets all the right things right and takes creative liberties where they make sense. For the price these go for, you really can't go wrong for what is on offer here. Now, if you'll indulge me, putting that red text above the six o'clock subdial on their silver VRT with some screw down pushers and a crown sort of like this, well then True North Watch Company, you can have my money. <laughs>